Turn it up. Facebook. What does this tell you that a slew of other millionaire books won't? Yeah, well, I mean, I, I think it's the more, more practical approach. One of the things I'm concerned with is this whole notion of gathering more information. Most people don't need more information. They need to do something with the information they already got. And so our focus is on how to move them into action. He's on, how to move he's them on. into a different uh, space rather than just simply going and... Because if people just think about how many courses they've taken in seminars or materials and the stuff sitting on the shelf, what people need to do is to move into action. There's not enough people doing that. Tell me about the corporate response, because you've gone not just to small businesses and, and, and preach that message, but when it comes to the top end of town, what are they telling you they need to change? Well, so my whole folks, I've been doing this for 25 years, and what people say they want today is they want people to put into action, and so we teach accountability. You know, get somebody to hold you accountable to move into action. Corporations, and I'm, I'm, I'm meeting with several uh, major corporations when I'm here, they're, they're tired of having just more uh, uh, stuff shoved down salespeople and entrepreneurs' throats. What they want is to have somebody to kick them in the behind when they need to be kicked in the behind. Most people just gather information that sits on the shelf. Is part of that message hard to enact, given that we as a nation haven't had that jarring experience of a great recession? Well, I, I, I do think so, but it's, it's universal. Uh, every, every country I go to, people say, but it's different in my country. It's not. I, I go right around the world five times a year. Uh, people in Malaysia suffer from the same thing that people suffer here, which is complacency and procrastination. And, and so you, you don't detect that there's, there's a certain uh, hunger in some markets relative well, to Well, I, I do agree with that. And, and Australia is, that, is one such market. I mean, I've been surprised at the reception here and the hunger that people are to, to, to move. I mean, things are happening, but people want to have it have it happen faster for them. Mm -hmm. And they can, if they just put into practice the things that they, many of them already know, and get rid of a lot of strategies that are no longer effective. What happens if, if their mindset is, is shifted, but the end consumer has got the blinkers on? How do you break, break that well, one down? Okay, so there, there are certain things that we know about people who are jaded and, and, and uh, uh, bombarded by marketing messages. So you've got to get through it. You know, and we recommend doing things like increasing credibility. Uh, creating what I call attraction marketing uh, devices and attraction marketing events, which changes the whole nature of business. Instead of you chasing somebody, make the prospect come to you. So offering, for example, some free informational product that is not so much focused on selling. People do this. They're constantly bombarded prospects. I say stop doing that. I wrote an article one time called Selling is Like Kissing. Right. The what? best kissers are always leaning forward. And the best right. prospects are always leaning forward. So you've got to create strategies to make them lean forward. The thing is, with that example, surely it doesn't change over time. That, that holds true right. as it did 20 years ago as it does today. But you do point out in your book that a lot of the problem is outdated methods for getting customers. Right. So how can you be sure your template today is the most effective? In another five years, you might not discover a better one. Well, of course, we're going to constantly change. There are some, there are some standards for it. Uh, for example, that allow us to, to, to measure the physical results. I've generated over a hundred million dollars for myself and my partners uh, by using the strategies that I know work. Now, they, they may change a little bit in the style, but the fundamental, fundamental approaches are the same. People are tired of being sold to and get that by advertisers and marketers. And when you change that around and, and, and provide a focus on their needs and their problems. You need those, as you said earlier, somebody to kick you up the backside, but that person has to have street cred. You talk about Bob Proctor, one of your mentors, and the, the tongue lashing he gave you early on mm -hmm. as to how much you were earning relative to how much you could earn. Right. But in order for that to get through to you, you had to respect him. Right. Is there a problem with respect that managers can't necessarily claim that? This well, and I think that's the crux of the problem, Carson. That people are so focused on selling, on getting their message uh, across, that if, if they turn that around and focus on the needs and problems of their target market, or their employees, or their vendors, stop trying to sell so much. Find strategies and information that will help those people with their needs. They're much more likely to come forward. And that's what, that's in essence what he did for me, is he got me uh, believing in myself when I didn't believe in myself. I, and I believed in his belief in me. And that's the thing that just...
changed my whole world. Well, what capacity is there in all of this to say what you enjoy the most, you do the best at? How does that really shoot home to people versus simply the quest to be more effective? Because they may not be doing fundamentally what they were meant to do. Right, right. So how do you read well, it? I, I think it's, it's just realizing that we have more potential in our baby finger than we give ourselves credit for. And that if we just realize that we've got this potential mm -hmm. to do more and have more and be more, recognize that it's there, it's possible. And that's why I share my story. A guy like me who got kicked out of school when I was 15, uh, lived on welfare, government-supported housing for the first 18 years of my life. If I can do it, anybody can do it. And I did it in the middle of a recession. My credit cards were maxed out. I didn't have any business experience. Uh, but if you, if you just realize that there's something available uh, within every single one of us, then the results can change, and they can change dramatically, and particularly in Australia with this economy. I mean, it's a great time. And also, it's, it's a disturbing environment because it almost reflects what you've said happened in the United States. If you're shelling up 20% or more of your income, you're into the danger zone when it comes to uh, debt payments on mortgages. We are up there in very dangerous territory. Right. I mean, how much of that has to be understood for what it is? Well, uh, so... so my area of expertise is more the generation of revenue and income. How, how can someone uh, uh, double their income, quadruple their income? I mean, I've worked with clients here in Australia who've seen that result right now. And so I'm more for, for let's raise our income, and then those numbers on the other side come down. But if your boss says, no, 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 you're not getting any more, you're in a straitjacket. Right, right. And so I, I'm a big advocate in multiple sources of income. So get out of that kind of not, not necessarily salary. Not, well, not necessarily because that's that's a, an irresponsible thing for me to say. But I, I will say this: that anybody can create multiple sources of income, and that may be uh, a sideline, it may be a, a separate business, but it's not another job. And does that square with being focused to the hilt on one task and one task alone? Well, I mean, we have the ability to do many things. Like, I mean, do you become kind of a bit of a gadfly and therefore a master of nothing? Right. I, 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 no, I don't think so, because we're not talking about doing a hundred things. We're talking about doing one extra thing right. to create additional source of income. And then once that happens, we've seen people who make more on that multiple source of income uh, on a part-time basis than they do on a full-time basis, and then they need to make some decisions. Jerry, I know you're full of beans, full of passion for what you're doing. Wish you well on this trip. Come back and uh, update us in the future. Thank you very much. I really appreciate this. Jerry Robert there with the very latest on a millionaire mindset. Do stay with us because coming up, Facebook, well, talk millions, think billions here, launches this week its long-awaited IPO. Will its influence, though, be as pervasive as its supporters predict? Suresh Sood from the University of Technology, Sydney, is with me on that.